I'm gonna get so many followers. Oh, yeah. Never, never doing that again. I'm never doing that again. Hi everyone, it's Charlie. Hopefully you've had a chance to see Spider-Man Far From Home now. It's been out for a couple of weeks. Kevin Feige and the director have started talking about what they're doing with Spider-Man 3. I know there's a lot of questions, there's a lot of new rumors that came out about a special deal with Sony, about the movie having to earn a billion dollars, or Sony gets the rights to Spider-Man back and Marvel loses the character. Don't worry, I'll address all that in this video. There's a new round of that IMAX ticket giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave your favorite Spider-Man moment on the video. So I broke this down top 10 style. I know you have a lot of questions about how Nick Fury is going to get involved with this. How is he going to help Spider-Man? Because it seems like he would have the technology for proving that Mysterio's video is fake news. What's going to happen with the Sinister Six characters that they teased in the Spider-Man Homecoming post credit scene. But Spider-Man 3, basically think about it this way, is basically the John Wick 3 of the franchise. Spider-Man on the run from everyone. It is hunting season, quote unquote. So remember that idea. So starting in the mid-credits, post-credits scene, number 10, Spider-Man goes on his date with MJ, web-slinging around the city in the new Steve Ditko upgraded Spider-Man suit. It sounds like he just reprinted a new copy of the same suit using another one of Iron Man's special printers, just wherever he found one, because I don't know that they've rebuilt the Avengers base at this point, but there's Stark Enterprises buildings all over the place. It's a multinational billion dollar corporation, so they would have facilities everywhere all over New York City that Peter could go to to use an one of these printers. Because they haven't rebuilt the Avengers base though, more on the future of the Avengers team at the end of this video. Sam Jackson was actually teasing about Fury putting together a new team of Avengers during all the press for Spider-Man Far From Home. So very exciting stuff. Nine, they land. MJ has the opposite reaction to web slinging from all the previous versions of her character, completely loses her shit and says they're never doing that again. It's meant to be a joke because of course he's going to have to save her at some point during Spider-Man 3 with all the villains coming for him and it'll involve web slinging around the city. You remember Kirsten Dunst's character? She actually really enjoyed swinging and then Gwen Stacy during the Andrew Garfield era. All of them loved web slinging with Spider-Man. Eight, as he goes to leave, there's a news broadcast that airs the fake footage that Mysterio shot and edited of their final fight on the London Tower Bridge. It's a worldwide broadcast and the newscaster, most of the public watching all over the street seemingly totally believe what Mysterio tells them in the footage. But he tells them that Spider-Man mysteriously attacked him without warning. He doesn't understand what's going on. I don't know why. He just turned on me. Then tells them that Spider-Man proceeded to evil guy monologue hilariously his way through their fight. Telling Mysterio that only he would be Iron Man's true successor. Then makes it look like Spider-Man ordered this whole cyclone monster drone strike on London Tower Bridge. Seven, that's not all. They also say another source has even more footage with another separate video from Mysterio. Surprise, it's J.K. Simmons coming back as J. Jonah Jameson. My entire theater erupted in applause and cheers when he came on screen. This new MCU version of the character is more of a video blogger, conspiracy nut yelling into a camera instead of yelling at newspaper journalists. But he airs the footage of Mysterio publicly outing Spider-Man as Peter Parker, showing a picture of Peter Parker, then makes it look like Spider-Man killed him. So J. Jonah Jameson calls Mysterio the greatest superhero in the history of the world, blames Spider-Man for everything, setting the stage for one of the greatest and most classic rivalries in the comics. I want that ball crawling arachnid prosecuted! I want him strung up by his web! I want Spider-Man! Spider-Man versus J. Jonah Jameson. He basically calls out Spider-Man on national television and implies everyone should want him dead. He's basically taking out a hit on Spider-Man without actually taking out a hit on Spider-Man. But six, that's not all Mysterio's videos and J. Jonah Jameson's call to action do. Because the news was broadcast all over the world, now everyone, both regular people and all the Marvel villains who want Peter dead, know who he is. Kevin Feige just revealed that the story of Spider-Man 3 would be one that we had never seen before on screen. That could be any number of stories. I mean, there's a lot of different Spider-Man stories they haven't done yet. But the reason why I'm calling this the John Wick 3 of the Spider-Man movie franchise is because of what the director said and the villains he wants to use for Spider-Man 3. Just to address the rumor about Sony taking the character back if Spider-Man Far From Home doesn't make a billion dollars, because it sounds like Kevin Feige thinks that they're making Spider-Man 3 Amy Pascal also said that Spider-Man would be with Marvel for a long, long time. 
But just a couple days ago, there was a famous blogger named Richard Rushfield, who's relatively well respected, said that he had learned special details about Sony and Marvel's sharing arrangement for the character and part of the terms of the agreement he claims is that if Sony does not make a billion dollars on Spider-Man Far From Home, then Marvel loses the right to make Spider-Man 3. I would be skeptical about that, but I think it's a moot point because Spider-Man Far From Home is on track to earn a billion dollars, so I don't think that it's going to matter either way whether or not that's true. Five, he mentioned paying off the Scorpion and Vulture Spider-Man Homecoming post credit scene. Scorpion and his friends want Spider-Man dead, and the reason he says that they didn't cameo during Spider-Man Far From Home is because they spent most of the movie in Europe and the story was more about Spider-Man wrestling with his identity. By the end of the movie, he finally accepts his role. He, he knows who he is and what he's going to be doing going forward. But then there's that big twist where they pull the rug out from under him and out his identity. So he's like, holy crap, what am I going to do now? So that's why they didn't want to go full blown Sinister Six right away. But four, the director also mentioned that the main villain he wanted for Spider-Man 3 was Kraven the Hunter. So everybody freaked out when they heard this the other day. Kraven himself obviously wasn't in the movie, but there was a reference to Kraven's last hunt at their hotel in Venice. The hotel's name is Hotel De Mateus, which is a reference to J.M. De Mateus, the very notable writer of Kraven's last hunt. He wrote a lot of other big Spider-Man stories, but the most famous story that he wrote was Kraven's last hunt, one of the best Spider-Man stories of all time. Is everything all right? Stay out! There were a lot of other references to other big Spider-Man comic book stories and writers. I'll post a link to my Spider-Man Far From Home Easter egg video at the end of this. There were a billion Easter eggs. But there were a ton of scenes during Spider-Man Far From Home that logically set the stage for how Kraven could show up in Spider-Man 3. There was a series of deleted scenes at the beginning of the movie that's going to be on the Blu-ray with Spider-Man taking down the man Freddy mob. It was all those scenes in the trailers of him in the Iron Spider suit taking down those mobsters. That's the man Freddy mob from the comics, aka Silvio Man Freddy, Silvermane. Well, no, I don't have time. I'm too busy doing your jobs. Oh. Spider-Man took him down. They want him dead so they could hire Kraven the Hunter to hunt Spider-Man down. Three, Kraven in the MCU could just be someone looking for the next big hunt challenge the way he does in the comics and decide that his next big target is Spider-Man. The world's number one most wanted because, thank you very much, J. Jonah Jameson, hailing Mysterio as the greatest superhero in the world and Spider-Man just killed him. So Spider-Man is like the FBI's number one most wanted criminal right now, even though technically he didn't do anything wrong. There are a number of other major Marvel comic book villains that they haven't done in the new MCU movies yet, like Norman Osborn or other big villains that would have the money to hire Kraven if they wanted to get their hands on the Edith glasses because he still has the glasses at the end of the movie. He's walking out of JFK airport with them on his shirt. So all those orbital weapons platforms, all the drones, all that extra technology that we didn't see but that exists, villains want that just as bad as the heroes do. But number two, you probably heard that Sony is also planning on doing their own Kraven the Hunter movie set inside the Venom verse. There was even a very prominent Kraven Easter egg in the Morbius movie behind the scenes that we saw. There's a Kraven off truck. So even though we haven't even seen the trailer for that movie yet, they're still trying to say that, oh yeah, we're definitely going to do Kraven at some point. Marvel almost used Kraven as the villain for the first Black Panther movie before they decided to do the Killmonger plot. I think it was the right choice, but they were just going to save Kraven for a later movie, ostensibly for a Spider-Man film and Sinister Six action later on. But if Marvel wants to use Kraven now, they actually have to make a new deal with Avia Rod, who's in charge of all the Venomverse movies. Amy Pascal is only in charge of the Peter Parker MCU Spider-Man movies. All the other Venom, Spider-Man related stuff is a completely different group of people led by Avia Rod, which I'm sure he would be happy to loan them Kraven the Hunter, but that means that they would also have to probably give something from the Marvel Universe to him. But at the end of the day, no matter who the main villain is, it's still John Wick 3. Everyone coming for Spider-Man. All the villains who know his secret identity, but all the heroes and all the FBI, Homeland Security, regular law enforcement agencies. So it is open season on Spider-Man. But number one, real challenge he faces now is in getting Nick Fury's help to figure out a way to disprove all the fake news that Mysterio created to prove to the public at large that he is the hero that they can believe in. And a lot of you ask, why didn't Nick Fury help him out during the film after that? Because obviously they just wanted to end on a big WTF moment. And based on the way they played that last post credit scene, it seemed like Nick Fury had also done the very Spider-Man Peter Parker thing of turning his phone off and just ducking everyone's calls for a little while because he quote unquote wanted to go on a vacation 
post-Avengers Endgame. Fake Talos, Nick Fury even has a joke earlier in Spider-Man Far From Home during a scene when he first shows up in his hotel in Venice where they reference the funeral and why Nick Fury didn't introduce himself and get Spider-Man's number. You're a very difficult person to contact, Spider-Man. Their explanation was just that it would have been inappropriate because it was a funeral, it was really sad, and he didn't want to try and do something like that when they were trying to honor Tony Stark's memory. The director also clarified that Nick Fury actually went to outer space and Talos came to take his place right after Avengers Endgame. So it's not like he's been a scroll for like the last couple of movies. He was real Nick Fury during Avengers Endgame and Avengers Infinity War. We learned about an alternate ending to the movie and a whole bunch more deleted scenes. I'll do videos for that stuff in the next couple of days, but leave all your Marvel video requests in the comments. The Marvel Comic Con panel is happening next week on Saturday night. Of course, I'll do a video for whatever footage they drop, whatever they announce. It's going to be crazy. Everything you've wanted to know about Marvel Phase 4. Paul H., there, there is no way in hell that we are not going to show you some footage. Click here for all my Spider-Man Far From Home Easter eggs and click here for all my post credit scene videos. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.